Today we're doing video two of this three-part series where we're going to be sculpting a Triceratops. My name is Justin Harvilla. I am a professional sculptor living in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and in today's video we are going to cover mapping lines and keeping in good habits. One of the things that I started doing in the last few years is sculpting things on a Lazy Susan. And I wish I would have started that sooner because being able to move the piece very rapidly like this helps keep my eye traveling over the entire surface of the sculpt and not hyper focusing on one particular place. Also, uh, as I was editing this, I want to say thank you, Kelly, for pointing out that it sort of looks like I'm scratching a record whenever I speed the video up, and so now every time I'm watching an edit, all I can hear are little record scratches in my head. Um, Kelly is actually, for all of you, a really phenomenal metal worker, and I really want to bring her on one day and uh, have her share some of her skills with us. These mapping lines are really a critical part of my technique because it helps me understand uh, the symmetry between the two sides. That, that bilateral symmetry um, is something that can, for me, make or break a piece. It, if you overbuild the symmetry, if you overdo that a little bit, uh, it kind of becomes, you know, this thing in an uncanny valley. You know, if you're familiar with the uncanny valley where something looks real but it's a little too perfect in a way, and you can get the same type of thing if there's too much asymmetry. Though if you're doing uh, a really crazy creature, maybe that's something you want, and if that's the case, run with it. But just, I would caution you about too much symmetry. These lines I want to represent in a slightly different way, and I'm using Fusion 360 to help me do that. And Fusion 360 is a 3D modeling software. If you have any interest in 3D modeling or CAD work, I highly recommend that you check out Fusion 360 if you're not already using it. It's a program that uh, I learned uh, for a job and I've been using it, you know, I use it a few times a week, you know, all the time. Uh, sometimes even just to relax, I'll come home and uh, I have a hobby where I recreate uh, props from films that I enjoy. And Fusion is such a satisfying program because you can control every single aspect of the model. And I just find that really, really fun. Now, you'll notice these lines that are on the model here, and these are just splitting the various faces, and that's going to give us the opportunity to move the form uh, very specifically. I'm seeing this as a really good opportunity to show you something that I find a lot with beginner sculptors, which is they want to add material. If they see uh, an inconsistency, like the horn on the left, you see that at the top of that horn, there's a curve that doesn't match the one on the right. A lot of people will want to fill that curve in with clay. Well, if you do that, you're actually adding mass. Now, this line and this line are going to represent the ones that I carved into the actual clay horns. If I was to just start scooping clay into that curve, this line is still not going to be the same as the one on the other one, on the, on the right side. So we're going to go in and select these other lines because if I was to just try to move that one, it would wrinkle the 3D model in Fusion. You have to select all of the areas of the form that you want to move, and the clay is actually very similar to that. If you only focus on one specific area, the rest of it will suffer. And if you just start wadding on a bunch of clay, the mass will be different. Same thing if you start carving it away. Your bulking stage, where you've laid out the major forms, should be the last time that you add major amounts of material. So in Fusion, super easy to shift this. We've selected those lines, now we can just click and drag. And you can see that very center line now matches the one on the right almost perfectly. That's what we're looking for. We don't want to add material, we don't want to subtract material, we just want to shift the form until that symmetry uh, is on point with what we're looking for. Now, 
In future videos, I would love to use Fusion more or even do some Fusion tutorials, but for the sculpting, if you have found this to be a, a helpful way to wrap your head around this like strange kind of nebulous concept of, of a moving form, um, let me know in the comments. Let me know if you like this, let me know if this made it more confusing, so that in future videos, uh, I know what's going to help you the best. Another side effect of having mapping lines like this is because they do draw your eye, you're going to start noticing little details of various areas of the sculpt that maybe you wouldn't have noticed otherwise. That's again why it's such a good habit to every so often carve in a few new lines around uh, some shapes that you like in the sculpture. For example, the kind of orbital eye socket area of this sculpture, the right side had a curve to it that I really liked, whereas the left side was a little flat and plain. So I'm just matching one to the other a little bit better now. And having a tool like this with this 90 degree, there we go, with a 90 degree angle like that and a nice sharp point really helps to create that look of a bony rigid structure having tissue run over top of it. So if you see that, that's a very dramatic, not very natural looking little pocket I've carved out. But as soon as I start blending it in, and the curve starts going on it, it has this nice, smooth transition from the step down. And that really conveys that sense of a rigid structure meeting a softer tissue like an eyelid in this case. I want to thank you for watching this video and being patient with me as I am learning how to make these videos. Um, I plan on creating more of these and I'm really looking for your feedback. I don't want to actually launch the channel as I have it in my head until mid-July and so these are just a way for me to test out what I like and what I don't like. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next video in the series and hopefully you'll notice some improvements as well. See you then.